Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today, we are finally able to check out AMD's 3D vCache technology with the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. Now, for those of you who missed it, AMD did announce back in October of last year that their 3D vCache would arrive in early 2022, and they promised on average a 15% boost to gaming performance for the Zen 3 architecture, thanks to the much larger L3 cache. So they've delivered on one of those promises. Now we just need to find out how much faster it is. But before we do, Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by MSI and their B660 series of motherboards made for Intel 12th gen desktop processors. As many of you know, we've conducted extensive B660 VRAM testing and by far the best budget board is the B660-A Wi-Fi. Not only can it handle chips like the Core i9-12900 with ease, but it's loaded with features including 2.5 gigabit LAN and USB 3.2 Gen 2. Alternatively, for gamers craving cream of the crop performance without breaking the bank, the MSI B660 Tomahawk delivers everything you need and then some. So be sure to check out MSI's range of exceptional B660 series motherboards using the link in the video description. Okay, so we already know that L3 cache heavily influences gaming performance and that was shown quite recently in our more cores versus more cache video that was inspired, let's say, by the constant claims that more cores are the way to go for gamers, despite the fact that games are really quite bad at using core heavy processors, and we really don't expect that to change anytime soon. As a quick example, we found many instances where increasing the L3 cache capacity of a 10th gen core series processor from 12 to 20 megabytes, so a 67% increase, that could boost performance by around 20%, whereas increasing the core count from six to 10, so another 67% increase, that only improved performance by 6% or less. So therefore making the cores themselves faster rather than adding more of them is the best way to boost performance in today's games and likely those to come for quite some time yet. Knowing this, AMD has opted to supercharge their eight core 16 thread Ryzen 7 5800X with 3D vCache technology creating the 5800X 3D. Now this has seen an incredible 200% increase in L3 cache capacity going from the standard 32 megabytes to an impressive 96 megabytes. And this has been achieved by stacking a 41 millimeter square die containing nothing but L3 cache over the Zen 3 core complex die, extending the L3 cache capacity by 64 megabytes. AMD's claim this has improved gaming performance by 15% on average over the Ryzen 9 5900X, which is a very impressive claim. They also claim that the 5800X 3D is overall faster than the Intel Core i9 1200K, while costing significantly less. So it'll be very interesting to look at that. Price-wise, AMD has set the MSRP at $400 US, so the original price of the standard 5800X, which has now dropped down to around $340 US. Intel's Core i9-12900K on the other hand, that is up around $600. So should the 5800X 3D hit the $450 US MSRP, that would make it 25% cheaper than the competition. Another advantage of the 5800X 3D is the fact that it can be dropped into any AM4 motherboard that already supports Ryzen 5000 series processors, meaning relatively inexpensive B450 motherboards do support this new CPU, though ideally you'd probably want a decent X570 board to justify spending so much on the processor. It is worth noting that this is a gaming focused CPU. I'm sure there will be some productivity workloads that benefit from the extra L3 cache, though AMD hasn't given any examples if they do exist. Instead, AMD is 100% pushing this as a gaming CPU, and once you see the data, it'll make sense why there isn't a 5950X 3D, for example. So although AMD is pushing this as a gaming CPU, I will still provide productivity data, as I'm sure many of you will want to see how it compares with the 5800X there. Speaking of which, when compared to the 5800X, the new 3D version is clocked slightly lower with a boost frequency of 4.5 GHz, down 200 MHz from the original version. It's also worth noting that while you can overclock the 5800X cores, you can't do the same with the 5800X 3D, as AMD has locked core overclocking for this part, meaning you can only tune the memory. Now for testing the Ryzen 7 5500X 3D and all Zen 3 CPUs for that matter, I'm using the MSI X570S Carbon Max Wi-Fi with the latest BIOS using a GSA version 1.2.0.6b. Then for the Intel 12th gen processors, MSI Z690 Unify was used, again with the latest BIOS revision. 
all of this testing is fresh and the gaming benchmarks have been updated with the GeForce RTX 3090 Ti using the latest display drivers. As for the memory, if unspecified, DDR4-3200CL14 dual rank memory was used, but I've also included some other configurations using G-Skills DDR4-4000CL16 memory set to 3800, still at CL16, as the highest FCLK My 5800X 3D can handle without any memory errors is 1900 MHz, and this is the norm for all quality Zen 3 chips. Then for Intel, I've added a DDR5-6400CL32 memory configuration, again using G-Skills latest memory. Finally, both platforms were tested with resizable bar enabled. Okay, let's get into it. Starting with the Cinebench R23 data, we see that the 5800X 3D is actually 7% slower than the 5800X, and this is of course due to the fact that it is clocked lower. Operating at an all-core frequency of 4.3 GHz in this test, whereas the 5800X ran at 4.6 GHz. This is to be expected, and AMD provided their own Cinebench R23 data, which aligns with our findings. As a side note, some AMD users claim our Cinebench R23 data is off as their Zen 3 CPU scores higher, but what you're seeing here is the stock behavior of each CPU. If your model scores higher, it's either because the motherboard is auto overclocking or you have PBO enabled, but by default, this is the scores each model should produce. Interestingly, the single core performance has dropped by 12% according to the Cinebench R23 results when compared to what we see with the 5800X. So that is quite a large reduction, which typically wouldn't bode well for gaming performance, but of course we will look at that shortly. The 7-zip file manager decompression performance is about the same as what we saw with the 5800X. Here we're looking at just a 1% reduction in performance, so really no noteworthy changes here. The same is also true of the Corona benchmark. Here we're looking at a one second difference between the 5800X and 5800X 3D with the 3D model being a little bit slower. The Adobe Photoshop 2022 benchmark relies heavily on single core performance and here we're seeing a 6% reduction in performance for the 5800X 3D when compared to the 5800X. So that fat L3 cache isn't helping here for these productivity benchmarks. The 5800X 3D's code compilation performance was similar to that of the 5800X. Again, we're only looking at a 1% difference in performance. Now, once again, I am including Factorio in the application benchmarks as we're not measuring FPS, but rather updates per second. Now, this automated benchmark calculates the time it takes to run 1000 updates. This is a single threaded test, which apparently relies heavily on cache performance. Now, despite seeing little to no difference between the 5800X and 5800X 3D in the application benchmarks, we're looking at a massive improvement in Factorio. Amazingly, the 5800X 3D was 56% faster than the 5800X, and that meant it was 26% faster than Intel's 12900KS using DDR5-6400 memory, and that means it is now by far the fastest desktop CPU for this game. And briefly back to application benchmarks, we have Blender, and like all the other rendering applications tested, the 5800X 3D is a little slower than the 5800X, lagging behind here by a 5% margin. Interestingly, despite the massive L3 cache, which apparently isn't of benefit for rendering applications, the 5800X 3D used less power than the 5800X, reducing total system consumption by 15%. The fact that it's clocked lower and probably uses higher quality silicon is likely the major contributing factor here. Now for cooling, we use the Corsair IQ H150i Elite Capelix 360mm all-in-one liquid cooler, and this saw the 5800X 3D hit a peak dye temperature of 83 degrees after a 30-minute stress test using Cinebench R23. This result was recorded in an enclosed case, that being the Corsair Obsidian Series 500D, with an ambient room temperature of 21 degrees. Now for comparison, under the exact same test conditions, the original 5800X peaked at 87 degrees, so 4 degrees higher, and this is due to the fact that it does clock higher. Okay, time for some gaming benchmarks, and wowee, what do we have here? Far Cry 6 has proven to be a rather poor title for Zen 3's battle with Elder Lake, but the 5800X 3D looks to change all of that. Using the same DDR4-3200 memory as the 5800X, we're looking at a 44% increase in gaming performance, from 120 FPS to 173 FPS. That's also a 10% increase over the 12900K when using the same DDR4 memory. But it gets even better for AMD. Even when arming the 12900K with insanely expensive DDR5-6400 CL32 memory, the 5800X 3D was faster using DDR4-3200 and faster again with DDR4-3800 memory. 
Granted, the margin wasn't huge, but with the fastest stock memory you can get for each part, the 5800X 3D was still 6% faster. Moving on to Horizon Zero Dawn, and here we're still mostly GPU bound despite testing at 1080p with an RTX 3080 Ti and the second highest quality settings. Truth is, a lot of games are more GPU bound than CPU bound, which is why we include this data. Still, we're looking at a 13% increase for the 5800X 3D over the 5800X, and that did place it slightly ahead of the 12900K. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege Extraction is also maxed out with the RTX 3090 Ti at 1080p using the second highest quality preset with these high-end CPUs. There's a little wriggle room as the 5800X 3D proves, along with the 1200KS, but we're only talking about a negligible 6% performance improvement from 311 FPS to 329 FPS. The Watch Dogs Legion performance improvement is mighty impressive. Here the 5800X 3D was 33% faster than the 5800X when using the same DDR4-3200 memory. That also made it 10% faster than the 1200K, again when using the same memory. For maximum performance though, we paired the 5800X 3D with DDR4-3800 and that pushed the average frame rate up to 161 FPS, just a few frames shy of what the 1200K achieved using DDR5 6400 memory, so really a comparable result there. The Rift Breaker is a difficult title for AMD, but the 5800X 3D does help, boosting performance by 32% over the original 5800X. This is actually a great result as it means when using the same DDR4 memory, the 5800X 3D and 1200K are comparable in terms of performance. Unfortunately though, the faster DDR4-3800 memory doesn't help here, and the 1200KS with DDR5-6400 runs away with it, delivering 12% more performance, or a whopping 27% more when looking at the 1% lows. As was the case with Rainbow Six Siege Extraction and Horizon Zero Dawn, we appear to be maxing out what the RTX 3090 Ti can do at 1080p in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, with GPU bound limits of around 190 FPS. This still saw a 19% performance increase over the 5800X when using the same DDR4-3200 memory, while it was also 4% faster than the 12900K. Hitman 3 saw a 24% performance improvement from the 5800X to the 5800X 3D when comparing the average frame rate, and a 40% increase for the 1% lows. This allowed the 5800X 3D to match the 12900K when using the same DDR4-3200 memory, so a really impressive result there. Unfortunately though, the DDR4-3800 configuration only improved performance by 5%, whereas the 1200K became 22% faster when paired with DDR5-6400 memory. Like the Rift Breaker, Cyberpunk 2077 isn't a great benchmark title for AMD, and I say benchmark title because we're looking at well over 100 FPS, and that's plenty to play this game given that it's not a competitive title, you don't really need hundreds of frames per second. The 5800X 3D gains are pretty tame here compared to other games, just a 15% boost, and DDR4-3800 didn't help to further performance. This means using the same DDR4-3200 memory, the 1200K was up to 16% faster, and then 32% faster when using the ultra expensive DDR5 memory. Now for testing power consumption using the RTX 3090 Ti, I've gone and tested the 5800X 3D and 1200K in three games, being Cyberpunk 2077, Far Cry 6, and Hitman 3, all using DDR4-3200 for both of the CPUs. In Cyberpunk 2077, the 1200K was faster, and then in Far Cry 6, the 5800X 3D was faster. So when it comes to power usage, the 1200K pushed total system usage 12% higher in Cyberpunk 2077, which isn't bad given it was up to 16% faster, but then in Far Cry 6 the 1200K was 9% slower, which isn't great given total system usage was 20% higher. The Hitman 3 data is interesting because both CPUs delivered the same level of performance, but the 1200K pushed total system power usage 9% higher. So while not always the fastest gaming CPU, the 5800X 3D is the more efficient part. Now to get this review ready in time, I was only able to test eight games, but I plan on testing a lot more shortly. For this small sample though, we found that the 5800X 3D is indeed slightly faster than the 1200K when using the same DDR4 memory. It is only a 5% margin, but that also made it 19% faster than the Ryzen 9 5900X on average, so AMD's 15% claim is looking pretty good. When using premium memory though, the 1200K did have the edge and was 8% faster when comparing the 1% low data. 
Certainly not a massive margin, especially given how much more expensive the 12900K is, let alone the DDR5 6400 memory, so I'd say the 5800X 3D has done a mighty good job overall. Well, I've got to admit, after recently seeing just how fast the Core i9-12900K is when paired with DDR5 6400 memory and the GeForce RTX 3090 Ti, I didn't think that the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D was going to stack up all that well, but it's really impressed me with just how fast it is, and some of those gaming gains were truly incredible. Admittedly though, I have only tested a very small sample of games, just eight, it was good to see the 5800X 3D edging out the 12900K when both were utilizing DDR4 memory. High-speed DDR5 though does still seem to give the Core i9 processor an advantage, but it is also very, very expensive, which I'm sure many of you are aware, though pricing is starting to tumble quite quickly. The DDR5 6400 kit that I use, for example, cost $610 US in February, then it dropped as low as $530 in March, before sinking to $480 in April, where it currently sits. Granted, that still means the memory alone costs more than the Ryzen 7 5500X 3D, but we have seen a 22% slide in DDR5 6400 pricing over just the last two months. Still, the Core i9 1200K slash DDR5 6400 combo will set you back $1,080 US, and then I imagine you'd want to spend at least $250 to $300 on a mid-range Z690 motherboard, so quite a pricey combo there. Alternatively, the Ryzen 7 5500X 3D, that should cost $450 US, yet to be seen, but let's hope it does. And DDR4-3800CL16 memory, that can be had for as low as $265 US, making for a $715 US combo, while a good quality X570S board will set you back around $220 to $250 US. Or you could just get a boring old X570 board like the excellent value ASUS Tough Gaming X570 Plus Wi-Fi for $160. And that means you can purchase the 5800X 3D, or you should be able to if it's available at the MSRP, plus high-speed DDR4 memory and a quality X570 motherboard for just $875 US, whereas the premium Intel package would set you back $1,330 US. So about a 50% premium for a few percent more performance on average. I've also ignored the 1200KS in these calculations because at almost $800 US, that CPU is rather pointless. It's a bit silly. It is very powerful, but ultimately pointless given the 1200K delivers pretty much the same level of performance for around $170 US less. But if you want to make Intel look particularly bad in terms of value, then yeah, you'd use the KS model. Now, if you were to use the same DDR4-3800 memory for both platforms, the 1200K would drop down to $1,125 US, but that's still an almost 30% premium over what would now be an inferior performing option. So as I see it, you either go really big with high-speed DDR5 when buying the Core i9-1200K, or you might as well just opt for the more efficient and easier to cool 5800X 3D. Of course, I am really keen to compare these two CPUs across 30 or more games, so I am working on that right now, and then we will know beyond a shadow of a doubt which is the ultimate CPU for gamers. Until then, I am extremely impressed with what we've seen here. I just hope that AMD can meet the demand. If the 5800X 3D turns into another Ryzen 3 3300X type situation, then gamers won't be happy. For now though, I'm gonna get back to benchmarking, so you can expect a much more in-depth follow-up on gaming performance. That should be on the channel quite shortly, depending on, well, how I go with that. But Within the next week, you will see a 30 game plus benchmark comparing the 5800X 3D with the Core i9 1200K. So that should be very good. Make sure you are subscribed for that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please do hit the like button. And if you'd like to support the Harbour Unbox channel directly and get some really cool perks in return, then we do have Float Plane or Patreon. Links for those are in the video description. You get access to a monthly live stream that Tim and I do for Harbour Unbox members. We also have an exclusive Discord server where you can chat with the rest of the community. Tim and I are also active in there. Behind the scenes content, Q&A, a lot of cool stuff. So if you're interested, check that out. But if not, perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.